Hey, good morning, brothers and sisters. God bless each and every single one of you. It's Hunter's Point here again. This is actually take two of this video. I, you know, I've had people texting me, so I'm sitting down and I'm wanting to deliver this message that I kind of foreshadowed, I guess, a little bit yesterday. I told y'all I was going to be delivering a message uh, about something that is important, and uh, here we are. So I wanted to address the times that we're living in, right? I believe we're living in the final moments of the end of days. We are in the last days for sure. And there's signs that point to us being in the last days. I wanted to read a little bit from Matthew chapter 24, and I think I'll go ahead and read verses 5 through 13. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. This is Jesus talking. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. It's Matthew chapter uh, 24, verse 5 through 13. So that's sort of the signs that we can look at to really show that we're in the midst of the last days. The rapture of the church is imminent. And I'll get to that near the end of this video. But I wanted to pick up my physical Bible. And I wanted to read a little bit from 2 Timothy chapter 3. I believe this perfectly describes in a single word the time that we're living in. And of course it has more signs on top of Matthew 24. But 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. I think the Apostle Paul described it perfectly in his second epistle to, Tim to Timothy. We are living in very perilous times, right? If there's one word that perfectly could describe the times of which we live in, they are indeed perilous. I don't know how much longer we have, but the rapture of the church is imminent. Or as Pastor J.D. Frog would say, any minute which he's true, he, he, he's telling the truth there. Nothing needs to happen for the rapture to occur, right? Those signs of the end of the age in Matthew 24, that's simply referring to signs to indicate that tribulation is about to come upon the world. But uh, nothing needs to happen for the rapture to occur. The rapture of the church is imminent. Um, tribulation's coming upon the world, the likes of which this world has never seen before and will never see again. I want to implore you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted him into your heart, I think now should be the time you do that. Because there is a certain amount of urgency in the air that didn't exist a year ago. Things are happening at a rapid pace, and it's starting to concern me, the things that are happening and the level of which they're happening at. If you do not, cry, if you do not know Christ, now's the time, right? How do you get saved and go to heaven? You repent of your sins, and you put your full faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Your belief is what saves you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1-4 is the gospel. The gospel essentially says that Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross of Calvary for your sins, right, to pay the debt for all mankind's sin. He was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead, according to the scriptures. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9, and 10 says that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved, right? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10.13, all who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Don't put it off any longer. Because we are this close to something big happening. That's why I've, I, I've said this a lot recently. I feel like we're on the cusp of something. Right? So if you have not accepted Christ into your heart and you haven't been saved yet, please do so now. Because when you die, right, assuming that you don't get raptured, now, if you believe on the Son of Man right now, you'll go up in the rapture whenever it happens. But assuming you're ones, you, you know, you're one of the ones that are going to die, there's one of two places you're going, heaven or hell. And I don't want you going to that second place. So I implore you, if you have not believed on the Son of Man, it's time. It's time to do so. Because only you can make that decision. I think I got what I needed to get out, out. Um... I will see you all in the next video, should the Lord tarry. So I hope this message was a blessing to you all. God bless you all.